When I was entering fifth grade, there was one teacher that everyone wanted. Without even knowing her, every kid begged to be in her class. It wasn't because she had the best lesson plans or the most colorful classroom or that she was the nicest. It was because she had a pair of green iguanas, Iggy and Dula. <laughs> they left such an impression on me that they've shaped who I've become over 30 years later as a fifth grade teacher of my, of my own in my own classroom here. Um, so how could it be that a pair of reptiles have made such an impact on me this long afterward? I think that it ultimately comes down to the connections that they help to foster. Many studies over the year have highlighted importance of making connections in the classroom, noting that children are relational learners and that positive student relationships are fundamental to success. When students feel connected, they're more likely to engage in learning and have better academic outcomes, fewer behavioral problems, and experience a greater sense of belonging. We know that these relationships are the key to success, but making connections with students isn't always as simple as asking a child about their weekend or taking an interest in their love of gymnastics or baseball. Sometimes making connections can be challenging, particularly for students who don't have this experience at home or for students who struggle to put words to their emotions. This is where having a class pet can help. Animals are safe. They're not assuming or judgmental. They don't ask questions. Children don't need words to connect with pets. They naturally want to interact with them and learn more about them. They easily form a student to animal connection. The animal then serves as a motivator for interacting with others who have a shared interest, creating a student to student connection. Here's an example from my classroom. Lainey was a quiet student in my homeroom. So quiet in fact that we struggled to find a suitable instructional group placement for her for most of the year until about March when we started hatching chicks. Lainey wanted to spend every moment in homeroom holding those chicks and talking to those chicks and fortunately she wasn't the only one. A few students from other homerooms joined her and then one afternoon I overheard Lainey and her new friend talking quietly and giggling together as they made up a poem about their favorite chick french fry. <laughs> Another type of connection that pets can provide is a student to teacher connection. Classroom pets evoke questions, stories, and opportunities to build relationships. Even if the class pet is a leopard gecko, it will undoubtedly bring forth cherished stories of Hunter's beloved cat, Walter, a perfect springboard for making a connection. The student-to-teacher connection also has the power to extend beyond the current students. For example, former students often stop by to check on our class pets. They pop in during lunch, after school, or during a basketball game when they can bring their families and friends. We recently sent a survey to our upcoming fifth graders who are coming from two different elementary schools. On the survey, students were asked if they already had connections with any of the fifth grade teachers. And 51 out of 76 students wrote my name. Now, I haven't spent much time at either of those elementary schools. These students wrote my name because they've likely stopped by my classroom or with a sibling or a friend to visit my pets. Because of these animals in my classroom, my connections with these new students have already been initiated. Imagine how that will impact the upcoming school year. Another important connection that pets can provide is student to self. In a 2016 study, pets were found to contribute to an overall stronger sense of identity in pet owners with mental health conditions. They're also known to boost self-esteem, reduce feelings of loneliness, and promote self-awareness. An example of this is my student, Nick who could be very energetic and impulsive. We've all had some nicks in our classroom. He loved holding our hissing cockroaches. And I observed that he always took a deep breath before holding one and remained still and calm the entire time. When I asked him why he did this, he told me that it was because he really wanted to hold them, but he was a tiny bit scared. He acknowledged that it was important for him to remain calm so that the animal wouldn't scurry. It was the first time that I had observed him being so in control of his body, and it was a strategy that we were later able to transfer to other scenarios in, in education and in the classroom. The final type of relationship I'd like to highlight today is the student-to-world connection. As students develop relationships with animals, their compassion grows. These feelings open doors for extensive learning and advocacy. Students fell in love with our spotted salamanders in our classroom. So when it came time to investigate their native habitat, vernal pools, students were invested. As we observed the pool over the following week, students grew concerned as the water level was dropping quickly. 
meaning that the salamander eggs would not have time to hatch and develop before the pool dried up. Together we came up with a plan to raise the salamanders in our classroom, all 117 of them, and release them when they became terrestrial. This act of advocacy and compassion impacted the vernal pool ecosystem and ultimately the ways in which students viewed themselves in connection with the world around them. So we all know the value that pets can provide in the classroom when it comes to making connections. And there are many other benefits connected to health, learning, and social emotional skills that we could discuss. But I wanted to take some time today to address the feasibility of having pets in the classroom. One potential roadblock might be cost. There are grants to support having pets in the classroom, but there are also some other less traditional options, like participating in foster programs, working with the community to raise and release salmon or trout, or collecting native species to observe. Another constraint might be time. There are several animals that require very little time. Consider pets that don't require frequent feedings or maintenance. If you don't want to care for animals during vacations, choose native species that can be released before the end of the year or small animals with transportable enclosures that can go home with students at the end of the year. With permission, of course. <laughs> if space is an issue, consider small animals or virtual adoption. Did you know that Maine actually has an Adopt-a-Cow program that allows students to make connections with local dairy farmers and watch a calf as it grows throughout the year? You could also virtually adopt an endangered animal and track its location throughout its life. Virtual pets are also a great option for districts with strict pet policies or students and teachers with allergies. Pet care can be another concern. This is a perfect opportunity to make a connection by allowing interested students to participate in their care. Carve out time during recess, homeroom, dismissal, or study hall. Once students become familiar with the routine, allow them to invite a friend to help, opening the door for yet another connection to be made. It has only been two years since I first introduced pets into my classroom, only two years. But the amount of learning, joy, and connectedness that I've witnessed in that amount of time is unquantifiable. As educators, as leaders, and as community members, we are the ones that have the power to create and support these connections in our classrooms and with our students. Now, I'm not asking you to run to the pet store today. Instead, I'd like you to just take a moment to consider the impact that a pet may have and how it might fit into your classroom, your curriculum, and your community. Ask yourself what kinds of connections you hope to promote with an animal. I'll be here to support you and answer questions moving forward if that's something you choose to do. Thinking back to fifth grade, I'm sure that Iggy and Dulap are long gone, unless of course they're record-breaking miracle iguanas, but their lesson remains. Pets in the classroom create a unique opportunity for making connections, and connections are the heart of education and the heart of humanity.